Hey everybody and welcome back to DAC of All Trades. So today we're going to be doing something a little different. Normally I do like art videos and build videos and that's kind of what I want to lean towards but I also do kind of sciencey videos. The uh, Secosphere video is a good good one to watch if you kind of like uh, you know biology or ecology or anything like that. And recently I have been really overloaded sort of with work in uh, I'm in college so you know I've got college classes and team projects and things like that and I've just had a lot to do. So I'm taking a class right now called Simulations in Biology, and I wanted to show you guys kind of a, a software that I've just learned about that is from that class. Uh, if you don't really know a lot about tech, that's not a huge deal. This is kind of just an interesting software anyways, and I'm really not going to go into too much of the technical stuff. I just want to show you a really cool tool and uh, some really cool stuff that you can do in a simple way. So I don't know if anyone's heard of Scratch, but that's sort of like an easy programming language that's block-based. There's a version of this. This is called NetLogo. There's one called StarLogo that's basically the exact same. You can look it up online. It's, it's just like an online web browser sort of coding thing, and you can make simple simulations in it. So I want to show you guys one right now. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and go to the models library, which the models library is just a bunch of pre-made sort of simulations and stuff. And what I'm going to go to is biology because I really like biology. And I'm going to open up this one called wolf sheep predation. And uh, this is just a simple sort of, I guess it's not super simple, but it's just an interesting little uh, simulation. So you can make things like this, but I'm going to show you one that's already pre-made real quick. So setup is kind of like a create the space and then go is actually run the simulation and then all these other things on here in this little ui are just like little tidbits that you can kind of do and i'll mention those later but let's run this so what this is is sheep and wolves so uh, if we run it what we can see happening is basically there's all these sheep and they, they you know they're around and the wolves eat the sheep and then the wolves repopulate when they eat the sheep uh, and what you can see here is all the wolves died and now there's a ton of sheep and the sheep are repopulating incredibly fast So we're gonna stop it and you can see on this graph It kind of shows like the wolves died out and the sheep are going crazy. If we set it up again and run it Then uh, you know, we'll try to get the opposite effect so you can see the sheep are going yeah and then the wolves ate all of the sheep and Now the sheep are gone. So the wolves have nothing to eat. So the wolves died too. So there's something wrong with this which is you know there's sheep and there's wolves and the wolves eat the sheep but you know if the wolves don't find the sheep quick enough then all the wolves die and then the sheep get too much and then yeah and or you know all the sheep die and the wolves have new food and yeah it's it's basically broken so uh there's a little quick fix what we can do and this is kind of cool to think about in like biological systems which is if we add into the equation grass which grass is something that's replenished by the sun it can grow right so we set this up. Now we have spots where there's dirt and we have spots where there's grass. So if we run this, what happens now is that the sheep eat the grass, right? And the wolves eat the sheep. And what this kind of does is it balances out the populations. So now the sheep are able to reproduce fast enough to keep up with the wolves eating them. So uh, you can see on the graph that the populations kind of fluctuate. So like when the grass goes up, that means the sheep are down and uh, whenever the uh, wolves eat a bunch of the sheep, then they're all those the sheep are dead. Then the grass gets you know higher again, and then uh, the sheep increase because there's so much grass around, and then they eat the grass, and then they die more. So it kind of fixes this population problem that we were having. So this is just a cool little simulation you can do. All these sliders and everything over here, these are all things that you can use to change. So like let's say. You know, we wanted more sheep at the beginning. So let's say we wanted, instead of 100 sheep, we want 150 sheep or 151. Uh, now there's more sheep, and if I press go, you can see uh, it still kind of balances itself out. The wolves still eat them, uh, but the grass goes down a lot faster. And then we could, you know, let's say, let's crank the wolves up to like 250, and we'll put like, I don't know, 96 sheep. Set that up. There's a lot of wolves, and what happens here is... Uh, a lot of the wolves die very quickly and now there's a ton of sheep and the reason that happened was there were too many wolves right all the wolves ate a bunch of the sheep and then all the wolves died and then a wolf wasn't able to find a sheep quick enough and it died and so the wolves just completely died out and this is kind of a cool thing in uh, biology where you can see or ecology 
where uh, if you have too many predators, that can be bad for you know the prey population, or it could be bad for the predator population. So uh, it's just cool little simulations and stuff like that. Uh, another thing that we can look at here real quick uh, is a different type of simulation. And actually, I want to mention this. This is maybe more technical, but uh, the way you make these, you come in here, and this is the code. If you've never coded before, look up some uh, some little tutorials or you know like videos about how to code in NetLogo. This is a really easy way to code. It's it's more sort of like thought based rather than like code language based. So like. You just say like set the color white, right? And that just makes the sheep white. So it's very simple to learn. So if you'd really like to like come sort of like learn about this kind of thing, just, you know, look up some uh, tutorials. It's very cool. So I do want to show one other simulation real quick. So we're going to go back to our models library, which you guys can't really see that right now, but you can go to it. So we're going to go ahead and swap over to a different model. And uh, I think that model is going to be under the earth science category. You know, if you, if you do try to like download this and go look at stuff, it's called the fire model. Uh, it's just an interesting little thing that kind of helps you like view forest fires and stuff. So like, let's set it up. So here's a bunch of uh, green dots. So super awesome, right? Basically what this is, is these little green dots are trees and the spaces in between are not trees. And then on the left side, there is a li red line. Basically if I hit go, that red line will scatter and try to get to the trees and burn the trees. And if the trees get burned, it won't be able to burn them again. So you can see the fire kind of makes its way through the thing, right? But it dies out and most of the forest here is still fine. But if I change this and I up it to like 63% instead of 57, and then I set it up and I go, what happens is the fire continues and kind of burns all the way through the forest. And what you can see here is it, it's really holding its own against the, uh, the trees. And what that did was basically I hit the density slider, which means there were more trees in between and less open spaces between them. So the fire had an easier time jumping from one tree to the next. Now, this is interesting because uh, it's why forest fires are kind of like good in a way. Basically, every once in a while, some places will do controlled burns just to make the tree densities uh, lesser, you know, burn out some of the middle stuff and uh, the rest of the trees will survive. So this is just another cool thing. I know this video maybe is not super similar to the ones that I usually do, so, you know, hang in there, uh, but I just thought it would be a cool thing to show you guys and maybe get some of you interested in sort of this simulative uh, coding thing. So, you know, think about it. And then if you like this one, then obviously let me know. I can always do more sort of science-y technical videos, stuff like that. Uh, if you like. So uh, let me know what you like. Like, should subscribe, share, all the things, you know, those stuff. Anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you guys are having a good week, and I will see you guys next time.